My name is Peter Bunzel and I am the author of Cogheart, A Stunning Adventure of Danger and Daring set in Victorian Britain. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about the story now and if you like what you hear, maybe you'll want to read it. So, this is what the book's about. Um, the story is set in a Victorian world where people travel to work by airship and they have mechanical servants who look after them, clockwork mechanical servants. And Lily, the main character, her father, John, is a famous inventor. And one day he's traveling home from work on an airship when he gets kidnapped by two evil men with big silvery mirrored eyes and they take him away and he disappears. And so Lily has to run away from school and from her big house in the country and her evil governess and go on a big adventure to look for him. But it's winter and it's snowing and she's traveling on her own. And um, luckily she makes friends with this boy called Robert who's the clockmaker's apprentice in the village down the road. And he has found her pet mechanical fox called Malkin, who's brought a message to Lily from her father. Um, and it's a clue on about how to find him. So they go off together um, through the wintry countryside and try and find out what's happened to Lily's father. So that's a little bit about the story. I'm gonna tell you about one of my favorite characters who's Malkin, the mechanical fox in the book. And the reason I like him is he's kind of your typical um, know-it-all character. He's always telling Lily and Robert what to do on their adventures and he thinks he knows best, but he doesn't really. And um, his ideas um, normally don't quite work out. But he's a, a brave companion and very loyal and courageous and he helps Lily and Robert on their adventure. He's a bit, of a, a bit like um, C-3PO and R2-D2 in Star Wars, he's kind of a bit like those kind of characters. And they were my inspiration for him. So I was wondering, what kind of mechanical animal would you have if you were going on an adventure? And what would their special skills be? And how would they help you on your adventure? Malkin pressed his forepaws against the flight deck window and peered out. The silver airship was still following, gaining on them. The purr of its propellers and the whoosh of its knife-sharp hull cutting through the air sent a shiver of terror through his clockwork innards. The fox tore his eyes away and stared at his master. John's ship, Dragonfly, was fast, but she had nothing in the way of firepower. The silver airship, by contrast, bristled with weapons. Sharp metal spikes stuck out from her hull, making her look like some sort of militarized porcupine. Just then, Dragonfly's rudder shifted and she pitched as John twisted the wheel into a 180 degree turn to swoop back past her pursuers. The silver airship shrunk away, but within seconds she'd swung round to follow. She began closing in once more, her propellers chopping through the clouds, throwing dark shadows across their stern. When the two airships broke into a patch of blue, she fired. A harpoon slashed across the sky and thudded into Dragonfly's hull, the point piercing her port side. Thud! Another harpoon speared into the stern. Malkin let out a bark of alarm as the stench of burning gas filled the flight deck and the needles in the rows of instrument panels flickered into their red danger zone. Over the whine of the stalling engines and the crackle of the steel cables, the silver airship had begun to winch them in. John locked Dragonfly's wheel and engaged her autopilot. He threw open the cockpit door and with Malkin at his heels, dashed towards the engine room. Pistons pumped and crankshafts turned at full power while the cabin juddered and shook. In the center of the floor was a metal egg-shaped pod that sat among a tangle of pipes. John threw open its door. No room for both of us, he said. You go, Malkin, the fox gave a whimper of disapproval. No, it should be you, John. Humans over mechanicals. It's the law. John shook his head. I can't leave my ship. I need to try and guide her down safely. And you've no opposable thumbs. <laughs> he gave a half-hearted laugh and withdrew a battered envelope from his pocket. Crouching down, he stuffed it in a leather pouch around Malkin's neck. This is for my Lily. See that she gets it. What's in there? John smiled. Secrets. Tell her to keep them safe. She mustn't tell anyone about them. Not ever. Can you remember that? I think so. Malkin prodded the pouch with his nose, sniffing at it. Good, John said. 
Make for Brackenbridge. That's where she'll be. If I get out of this alive, I'll come and find her. Is there anything else? And tell her I love her. John ruffled the mechanical's ears one last time. It's at least a day's journey from here. Have you enough ticks? Malkin nodded. Take your winder anyway. John produced a tarnished key on a chain and hung it around the fox's neck, next to the pouch. Though heavens knows who will wind you if I'm not here. Thank you, John. Malkin stepped into the escape pod and curled up on the seat. By all the ticks, I hope to see you again. And I, you old friend. John shut the door. With a clatter and a hum, the pod bay doors opened and in a jolt the pod was free. As John watched it through the open hatch shrinking away in the sky, an image of his daughter Lily flashed into his mind. If only he could see her one last time, tell her the truth about the past. He should have done it long ago, but he not been brave enough. Now Malkin would have to take care of everything. It was all in the letter. Thud! Another harpoon smashed through Dragonfly's hull, and a whirring saw blade cut through her steel ribs, ripping cracks in the ship's tin chest. In a jagged screech, the cracks were wrenched into a doorway, and two silhouetted figures appeared. Their eyes glinted in the light. The thinner of the figures raised a stick with a skull handle. Then, John felt a blinding shaft of pain, and everything went black.